Hey, it's Doris with Aldi Books. I'm coming to you from Biddy Boo Step Stool because somebody has my filming location. Anyway, we are here with the Vacation Book Tag. This is an original tag from Steve Donahue and it is fabulous. This is an awesome stack of book here, books here. And thanks so much to Brian from Bookish for tagging me. I will link them down below as well as the people that I tag at the end. So here goes. Number one, what is your favorite book about someone taking a vacation? So the first thing that came to mind was River of Doubt by Candice Millard. This is Theodore Roosevelt's Darkest Journey. So after he lost, um, a presidential nomination after he'd already been president a couple times. He um, decided to travel down the Amazon with his son Kermit and man was it an adventure. <laughs> so yeah and right next to this one on the shelf was Velocity of the Monkey God by Douglas Preston. So this book, oh, I love. Uh, this one got me turned on. Boo! Oh my. This one got me turned on to what I call adventure nonfiction, which it's a thing. You can Google it and find some great titles. And it is, like a, I didn't know if it was exactly, um, a vacation because it's work you know so this is a journalist who went on a National Geographic expedition to um, the rainforest of Honduras and this lost civilization that was recently discovered oh my word what do you need boo come in here it's really good Okay, number two, do you read travel writing and what is a favorite? So, yeah, love travel, love travel writing. This one is just delightful. Hitching Rides with Buddha by Will Ferguson. This one, Will Ferguson spent several years living in Japan as an English teacher. And before he left, he hitchhiked from the southern tip of Japan to the northern tip of Japan and just wrote all these charming vignettes about the people and places that he encountered along the way. Highly recommend. Number three, do you have any books on vacation rituals or what are they? Um, I don't really think so except um, I do tend to take at least two more books with me than the days that I'm going to be gone. I don't know why, <laughs> but it happens every time. Uh, number four, uh, what are your favorite books that you found or first read on vacation? And this is not a body of knowledge that sticks in my memory, so I can't really answer that question, except that I picked this one up recently. Maybe that's why I can remember this one. Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton, and I haven't actually finished it, um, but I picked this up on my trip to Honduras uh, at Christmas, and... <laughs> I have belly laughed so hard thus far. I read um, 95 pages and <laughs> this is um, zombie apocalypse told from the perspective of a domesticated crow named Shit Turd, ST for short. And um, his owner is Big Jim and we meet Big Jim as his right eyeball falls out and ST saves it um, from the jaws of Dennis, the bloodhound brother, you know. So, 
yeah, these are these are their adventures as they go off in search of a cure. Um, these times we live in, right, guys? So, um, number, what number are we on? Number five, have you ever light-fingered a book from a vacation stay? I don't think so, except... I have brought home a Harlequin romance from my mother's house on occasion. Um, I'm from Florida, so going home is always a vacation for me. And let's see, number, I can't even remember what number I'm on. I just finished one. Uh, number six, some of your favorite books set in exotic locales. Well, I would say that well over half of my books are set in exotic locales. Exotic to me because I like reading books from other places. So instead of making this hard for myself, I just grabbed three from my, um, um, what are these Latinx shelves? I keep, I keep my books in groupings. You know, I've got Asia and I've got African continent. Uh, and I'm working on my Latinx um, shelf, so it was smaller than the rest, but hopefully by next year it'll it'll grow. So I grabbed three from there that I love. Um, Esmeralda Santiago, when I was Puerto Rican, this one set in Puerto Rico. Obviously, this is a memoir, and it is so awesome. Like I cannot imagine anybody not enjoying that. It starts when she is a tween, I guess, and goes through to um, her early teen years and they move to New York City. Um, then I have Fruit of the Drunken Tree by Ingrid Rojas Contreras. This one is set in Colombia. Um, and you've got Pablo Escobar dancing around in the background of the story, kind of like a modern day pseudo Robin Hood of the people. And yeah, this is just really rich in setting with the middle class and the um, poor living in the mountains around the city. And yeah, I really enjoyed that. I read it for the Book Two Prize last year. And then um, an oldie but goodie, Carmelo by Sandra Cisneros. I read this a couple years ago, so it's not vivid on my memory, except I remember how vividly she portrays the, just the scenes of the time, uh, or the place I would say, like if you've traveled to Mexico, um, you, you feel like you're there in this book. So just a little few sentences here. We travel from the Mexico City that the Paris of the New, that was the Paris of the New World to the music filled streets of Chicago at the dawn of the Roaring Twenties. And finally to Lala's own difficult adolescence in the not quite promised land of San Antonio, Texas. Carmelo is a romantic tale of homelands, sometimes real, sometimes imagined. Vivid, funny, intimate, historical. It is a brilliant work destined to become a classic. Really enjoyed it. Okay, number seven. Do you think the coronavirus will kill us all? Well, <laughs> The Great Influenza by John M. Barry, the story of the deadliest pandemic in history with a new afterword on H1N1 swine flu. You might need to add an addendum to or write a new novel for these times we're in. Um, but from this, no, it won't kill us all. Some of us, yes, how many to be determined. Um, but this is very inspiring in the links that people in science blazing the trail to find the cure and contain the virus and the strengths of the virus themselves. That's not inspiring, that's intimidating, but yeah. Great book that I read last year. 
And what was the last book you read while on vacation? So I just went to Florida for spring break and spoiler alert, I don't think I've finished anything yet this month. Um, I've got major squirrel syndrome uh, with this coronavirus and the interwebs, but um, we listened to this in the car, A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. This is fantasy. Um, set in London, but there are four like fantasy Londons that only this special magician can travel between and it was so good. Like I love the characters in this. Um, I am totally team captain, whatever his name is. What is his name? I loved him. I love the captain. I adore him. <laughs> I like I like Kel and, um, what's the girl's name? Delilah Bard, <sighs> but the captain, oh my. Uh, anyway, yeah, and this is the second in the series, and I read the first one several months ago, and like I said with my memory, but this is rare with me, this book, I, I just, I picked it up seamlessly mentally, just no problem, so, yes enjoying that and hope to finish it in the next day or two. I'm going to get back on track with this reading thing. I'm going to make a spread in my bullet journal and make myself read. <laughs> make myself get off the internet. That's what I'm going to do. Anyway, so tagging some people, I try to find a few people that give off a travel vibe. So I am tagging um, What Camel Reads. Bookish Islander, Run Right Reads, Erin Go Read, and Lindsay's Book Life. I think that that was there, was, there was a lot of reading and books in there, so yeah, I think, I think that's going to help me. You guys help me get on track here. And I'm going to link them below as well as Steve and Brian. And you guys check them out because they're all fabulous channels. So, thanks so much for watching. I'm off to read, I promise. And be back soon. Bye. You are an annoying little creature. And I need to sweep in here. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. And I forgot to mention, uh, these are the last of the vlog clips coming up at the end of this and they're perfect because vacationing um falling waters state park in florida north florida so go visit your state parks you can do that falling waters state park florida obviously <laughs> Feet. That's pretty. Friend, you're gonna be a butterfly one day. <laughs> so cute. Ooh. That looks like that fern I just bought last weekend. Found a friend on the Florida rhododendron. Hey, guy. This is how people get lost in the woods. In search of that one perfect rhododendron. See, that could be it right over there. I just have to get through these logs to get to it. Mission accomplished. Whoa, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Bonus. Double bonus. Oh, what is that? It's gorgeous. Triple bonus. The red letter day. Focus. Focus. 
focus. No, I don't wanna. <laughs> there we go. So pretty. Life's an adventure. <laughs> Ooh, my family's leaving me. Look at these gorgeous ferns. Oh, where's Gabriel? There he is. <laughs> yeah, you know I fell off that log in the woods. That's what it looks like a week later. No pain, no gain. And one more thing before we go. I have pictures posted on Instagram of my trip, if you're interested. Um, Doris Sander over there. Really, we're leaving Say bye, guy. Hey, guy. Say bye. Guy. Can you say bye? No? You busy? Okay. Bye.